All right, folks. Part two, part two. I had a couple of technical difficulties. It seemed as though the Wi-Fi in the whole house, um, even my Madden game went down. I'm playing a little Madden during the holidays. Got some uh, eggnog I might tap into. Uh, my immune system kind of weak coming back from that freaking holiday vacation. Nonetheless, we were talking about holiday spending and how it is detrimental to your finances. That's what we were talking about. And I really want you guys to be... I want you guys to be grown-ass adults. That's what I want you guys to be. I want you guys to be grown-ass adults and really just hunker down and try to minimize the amount of money that you spend on this holiday season. Not because of Corona, Corona 19, COVID 19, just because it's gonna be the best thing for you long-term. I wanna say every year I get around this time and I do a couple of these holiday, uh, you know, reduce your spending videos, just to kind of give people that, you know, really strong reminder that this is only a short time during the year, a couple of months during the year, a couple of days during the year, but people are going to spend an astronomical amount of money. And it's really, really imperative that you guys don't spend this money the way that you probably plan, planned on doing. I don't care if you make $400,000 a year, $250,000 a year, or $40,000 a year. The thing about it is we do a lot of frivolous and miscellaneous spending. And you don't feel it in the current day. You feel it when you're reaching in your pocketbook. You, you, you feel it when you're reaching in your wallet, you know, a month from now, three months from now. When everything has pretty much dried up, all the sales are gone, all your friends are gone, all your family is gone, and all your money is gone. And all your money is gone. That is when you feel the pinch. That is when you feel the hurt. When your family and friends don't need you no more. That's, that's when you feel it. That's when you feel it. You feel the hurt of your finances when your family doesn't need you no more, meaning they don't need your money anymore, okay? This is when your family don't need you or your money anymore. But see, you're not going to know about that because you can go and spend all your money on people who say they love you. But I want you to think about this when you are hurting on your mortgage payments. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Are they friend are they your friends and family then? Oh, that's a rough one right there, I know. Cause they will have you to believe that they have your best interest in heart. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. But you know and I know those same people that come inside your life every October, November time frame, and they stay around to right out the New Year's Eve. Will they be friends, family, or foes? <laughs> They're the one who leech off of you. Those are the ones who take advantage of you. This is a time where I guess you should be really safeguarding your finances, saving your money, taking care of yourself. Because everybody is thinking, you know, right, you know, COVID-19, yeah, I still got my job. And people are still spending like they're going to keep their job. None of us really know. Especially if you work for a corporation or organization, you 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 really don't know. You don't know you, you don't know what the outcome or the turnout will be with these different organizations. You really don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. Let me, let me switch the conversation a little bit.
I know some people are still probably on my other stream. I had a lot of uh, technical difficulties on my other stream. So I'm starting this one. I only see somebody, only one person in the chat, but that's okay. They can see it later. <laughs> Excuse me. I saw that supposedly Barack Obama was speaking about the democracy. I'm so confused about this country and what we live in today, right? Because people continue to say that we live in a democracy. We do not live in a democracy. Now, a democracy and a republic are different, but they're quite the same. But the Constitution at, at no time says that we live in a democracy. In the Constitution, it says that this is a republic. That's what this said, it, that this is a republic. And I did a video about an executive order that Donald Trump had put out uh, about the 1776 Commission which is very, very interesting. But I know a lot of times during this time, people are not really focusing on a lot of things, right? They're not focusing on their finances. They're not focusing on or what's going on in the world. But everything is essentially is a tie to your money. See, we think that, we think that the only thing that's tied to your money is the money that you spend or the money that you invest. But it's much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that. And that's why I always try to inform you guys that one of your best sources of finding out how your money is going to go, how your money is going to be, is through the media, unfortunately. Um, the media literally, depending on what stories that it comes out, has a direct effect of how the markets perform. I uh, forgot the guy's name. I think his name was George Soros. He's talking about buying uh, Powtech, uh, Powell Technologies. Not buying it, but selling some of the shares off. But, I mean, contrary to his selling off the shares, Powell Technologies still did very, very well. Oh, let me say this, too. Don't you know there's some people who sell their shares who sell their stocks in order to buy people gifts? My question is this. Now, granted, have I ever done it? I, I will admit, I have sold shares of some stocks in my portfolio to buy gifts in the past. And it wasn't worth it. The person wasn't worth it. <laughs> And me selling a great number of, of the things I've invested in wasn't worth it. You don't get that money back. You don't get that money back. Money compiles. Money makes money. That's why I used to say my money makes money. Because money compiles on money, compiles on money. And a lot of you are going to go out this holiday season and you're going to sell your shares. You're going to sell some of your stocks. You want to go into your 401k, your retirement funds, your emergency savings. You're going to go into your emergency savings. And you're going to buy a bunch of people a bunch of stuff that they may never use, that they probably don't even deserve, that they probably don't even know the value. So I'm just going to say this, be very cautious this holiday season and every holiday season, therefore, about the way you use your money, how you use your money and who you use your money with. We either be spending on it or not. Crypto say it might be an American thing. Um, yeah, it is an American thing, crypto. It is. Um. I don't believe other countries mass consume like Americans do. But other countries still have a little bit of that in them as well. Just buying a bunch of stuff, especially especially the Western world. The Western world, 
We are the largest consumers, but by far, Americans are the largest consumers, by far. We have one of the smallest populations, okay? We have one of the smallest populations, but we're the world's mass consumers. We consume a whole hell of a lot more than any other country. And you would think that China, with a billion people, you would think that India, with a billion people, will consume more than Americans. America is only 330 to 350 million. We are the largest consumers in the world. We are. We are. Now, being large consumers or being a consumer, you know, that's worldwide. Everybody consumes something. But as far as um, unnecessary and miscellaneous consumers, yeah, I agree. We are. Um, I, to kind of put myself out there, I, I buy some things that I typically don't need. Okay. But there are some things that I want. There are some things that I like that are nice. So if you work your butt off, there are some things that you can buy. That's why rich people live rich, because they can, because they work their butt off. They got their money, however they got their money, and they're like, hey, I want this. I can afford this. And that's what it's about. But what I'm talking about is rather are those people who may have low-wage jobs but who are consuming more than the richest people in this country are consuming. Then, oh, you know, America is highly in debt. Okay, well, why is America highly in debt? Because we got people who are highly in debt still buying stuff. Think about that. Think about you have no money in your bank account. You have no money in your bank account and you go out and you use your credit card. You go out and use your credit card and you go out and you buy stuff and you buy stuff and you buy stuff and you buy stuff stuff on your credit card. Now you're in credit card debt. (coughs) Excuse me. Let me get some water. But, you know, us Americans, we're the largest consumers for all the wrong reasons. You know, men, let me speak about mankind real quick. As men, don't we buy a lot of gifts for females that are undeserving? And ladies, I'm not saying you don't do that for men. But men, we always trying to impress a female with what we can buy them. That gets us in a large financial bind. See, so we already have the American culture of consumerism, of buying things we don't need. Then we also have being that man that, you know, I, I, I could take care of a woman. Or we don't may not say it publicly like that, but we show them. We show them the money. We got to be real careful during these holiday seasons, guys, because we can tend to spend a lot of money that we don't have. If you are buying things on your credit card and you don't have the money in your bank to cover it, do you think that's a smart idea? And I know, I know some of you are saying, well, the money is coming. I get paid on the first. I get paid on the 15th. But if you don't have it in your bank account right now, and you're going to use your credit card, and then you're going to pay off that credit card once the money comes, if the money comes, do you think that's smart to do? Do you think that's intelligent to do? That if you continue that cycle, don't, don't, don't you see if one emergency happens outside of your normal spending, one emergency happens that your, your whole financial, it, it can wipe out your whole financial future in one fellow emergency, in one fellow mishap. I don't know if you guys are thinking the way I'm thinking. I think about holidays very, very different. This is a time there where a lot of people go out and buy a lot of stuff for people who are undeserving, people who won't appreciate it. And quite frankly, you don't even have to buy 
those people those gifts. I'm just trying to give you guys some wisdom because I go back to, I go back to when I was living with my aunt. This is when my mother passed. My mother passed when I was 12. This is when I go back and I was living in Southeast DC and I went off to the Marine Corps. I went off to the Marine Corps and I remember during the holiday season, I sent a gift to her ahead of time, if I can recall correctly, if I can recall correctly. And I showed up and she opened up a gift. It was a handmade clock that this clock maker in Japan actually created. Very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. I, I, it was black. It, it was the, the, the time was in, in, in encased in glass with the gold trim and it had a little drawer in the bottom. It was a kind of a Japanese traditional clock, but it was very beautiful. It had a really polished, finished, some kind of like, you know, Japanese sort of thing. And I just, I, that's a nice gift. But I wasn't thinking. This clock cost me $250. Now, this was back in the day. So back then, that's a lot of money. But he made the clock from scratch. He didn't take a model and put the... No, I saw him. I was coming every day because I was just amazed that he was building it with fresh wood and carving it. She opened the gift. And she said, oh, this is beautiful. And not even 10 seconds later, she looks at me and she said, you could have just gave me the money. You could have just gave me the money. You know, I was hurt. I didn't let her know, but it, it hurt me for a long time. I let it go, though. It, it hurt me for a long time because it's like she didn't understand, you know, that I loved her and that I was being appreciative of her through this gift. Because when you give somebody something they can use, right? And that clock stayed in that corner for a very long time. I, I mean, I know she liked it, but it stayed in the, in the corner for a very long time. So she did keep it. But when you give someone something like that, they can look on and say, oh, I remember when you was, you know, 15, when you was 21, now you're 40, and you gave me that gift from Japan. Thank you so much. I still love it. But when you go out and you give somebody money, $100, $200 for Christmas or their birthday, all that, it, 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 does, it doesn't have the same intrinsic value, so to speak. It doesn't have the same meaningful because uh, money is just paper. Like they're just going to go and blow it on something, right? They're going, oh, take this and go spend whatever you want. We know as people get older, we like to give them nicer gifts or just kind of give them a gift card, you know? And again, a lot of you are gonna say it's a thought that counts. Yeah, I guess, you know. But I like giving people every now and again, because I can't always think of a meaningful gift, but every now and again, give them a meaningful gift. And I try to keep my circle small. I'm not gonna lie. People I live with, cool, you get a gift. You know, my son in college, okay, you get a gift. Other than that, uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> you send me a card <laughs> through the email, digital. <laughs> it calls me a fraction of a penny to send it on my internet. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not being cheap. I'm just being real. Why well, spend money you don't have to? A lot of you guys are going to go out here and send people all types of $50 and $100 gift cards. On these to you in a form of them not appreciating what you've done for them. Not all of them, but you know who I'm talking about. So whether it be this holiday season or the next holiday season, don't go out here and just spend your money like you crazy or spend your money like you stupid. Because a lot of you, 
You know and I know you living off your credit card. So you already in trouble. And then you about to go, I'm going to go catch these sales. Go ahead. Go ahead. Test your credit cards like that if you want. Because it's going to be your credit cards. Then it's going to be your rent or mortgage payments. Then it's going to be your car payment. Let me tell you something. Now, I did a voluntary repossession of a car when I was 20, 20, 21, 22. I bought some car from some Ethiopians in V in Virginia and they got me. This car was a bucket. It, it, it was a lemon. So instead of having a involuntary repossession, I said, Hey, come get the car. So it got repossessed and I had to pay the difference, which is thousands of dollars, right? Because of depreciation value. So I paid that money off which is a bad decision that I went to go buy another car before that car hit my credit report. So now I'm building up what a, a financial, a, a, a very, a very uh, a detrimental or very negative financial history with cars. Cause I got one voluntary repossession. This all happened in one month. So it takes about two to three weeks for these things to really hit your credit. That was back then. I think it's a lot quicker now. But nonetheless, it took about um, two to three weeks. So I went out and bought another car. So the, it, the other car loan was not even on there because the time that they repoed it versus the time, I think it was about two weeks total. So now I owe, now I owe my new car that I bought, that payment. Then I owe the repossession payment because just because you repossess your car don't mean that you're going to get full value. You never get full value for your repossession. You guys are like, where, 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 where are you getting at with this? A lot of you guys are going to falter on your car payments this holiday season. A lot of you guys are going to falter on your rental and your mortgage payment this year. See, you're going to go out here and try to catch all these sales. You know where I'm going to catch sales at? Do you know where I'm going to catch my sales at? At your house. Because all your shit going to be outside. <laughs> all your stuff is going to be outside. And I'm like, oh, that's a nice dresser. That's a nice bed frame. I'm like, hey, who's selling this? Oh, no, nah, man, it's all free. They just left it out on the sidewalk. That's what your stuff is going to be. Because <laughs> a lot of you are going to be, you're going to do horrible by your finances. You guys are going to go out here and uh, uh, use your credit cards as an extension of wealth. Okay? That's what you're going to do. What's going on, Preston and Ashley? This is what you guys are going to do. Because you guys rather keep the appearances up like the Joneses, right? You want to show everybody you doing well. You And why are you doing all this at the shopping mall? Hey, can you grab that chair for me? Can you? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, one of the worst feelings, right? I was with a partner of mine. This was, in, this was when, um, when I was in the Army. And this guy, like, hey, man, I'm thinking about buying a, uh, a camper for me and my family. Me and my family like to go camping, right? I said, I said, man, those campers are kind of expensive. He's like, oh, here you go. Always talking about finances. I'm like, dude, this world doesn't run. This life doesn't run without finances. Like, understanding and have some sort of financial literacy. You got to understand what things cost. You got to understand how, it's gonna, um, how much it's going to cost you long term, you know? You 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 got to understand these things. Like that's why I like to pay for things outright, most likely. But nonetheless, he said, oh, "I'm just gonna take out a loan and you know go buy me a camper." I did the man. Like, well, how's your credit score? What type of race? Oh, you know, I got like a six seven. I'm like, oh man, you at least want to get a seven hundred, man. Oh, 30 points. Uh. He goes out and. He uh, gets his loan. The guy told him, hey, man, 700, I can get you down to 5%, but with the 670, they got him around 13%, right? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Now, again, I'm from Southeast D.C. I remember I moved from Southeast D.C. to Merlin to Suitland, which is the ghetto. I moved from the ghetto to the ghetto because um, I was trying to avoid taxes. But my car kept getting bro broken in, right? Never stolen. 
No, 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 no. My Eagle Vision got stolen. My Eagle, my 1995 Eagle Vision got stolen. Do you know how it feels to come out somewhere and you say, I was parking right here. Hmm. Well, let me look over here. Let me look in the J or the M or the O or the P section, right? So looking for my car, I didn't find it. <laughs> so I had to report it stolen because someone, someone stole it. I got it back. I fixed it back up. But this is the point I'm making with this. So this guy goes out and buys this camper at 14% of the loan. I forgot how much the loan actually was, but I think it was around 20 grand. This dude somehow didn't understand that I was trying to tell him, well, you have two cars, you got a house, now you have a camper, you make this amount of money, you have this amount of debt, your wife has debt, you have this much wiggle room. You were doing good at first. So I remember that after he was going to pay on this camper, he was only going to have like 100 and 250 after all his expenses. I said, dude, if something goes wrong, you're done. Ladies and gentlemen, a matter of three months. This is why this is important. Holiday spending. Because he wanted to buy this camper for his wife or for his family, rather, not his wife. For the holidays. And I know this is a large gift, but people go out and buy cars and diamond rings and thousand dollar PlayStations. I'm not buying it till it. PlayStations are five hundred dollars or four hundred dollars. Don't go on eBay and buy your kids this damn one thousand dollar PlayStation. It's it's a. I'm gonna get off of that. Let me finish the story. So one day, I say, "Hey man, what you guys doing? Oh man, we have a couple of drinks." I said, "Okay, I come over there, right." Come over there, get some drinks. Hold on for a second. Give me a second. Oh, get some of this. Uh, get some of this eggnog over here. You mind? You mind if I drink some of this good old eggnog while I go over here? You know, if you got the the red cup, somebody doing something. But I've been laying down all day. I'm gonna have some of this eggnog while I talk to you guys. But anyway, so. I get invited over his house. I go inside. Now I didn't see his car outside. You know, usually you go over to my house, you see the, you see the kind of the same setup. I, you know, you see his car, you see whatever. So I go inside. I hate the credit system too, Ashley. I, I hate the credit uh, system too. But um, we sitting there playing cards, having a couple of drinks, okay, and uh. I said, hey, man, uh, you got your car in the garage? <laughs> I said, you got your car in the garage? He said, no, nah, I sit down front. And I was like, bullshit. That's good. Good old Costco. Already comes with the good stuff. You know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. I said, he said, no, nah, I sitting out there front. I said, no, it isn't. He went out front. He said, hey, babe, you let the neighbors use the car again? So he said, no, the key's right here. He reported it stolen. They told him it was repoed. All because he bought that camper. Three months later, three months later, within that, that three months time frame, they repoed the camper. Because he was spending all this money to get his car from the repo people. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Support the channel. Um, if you guys like to share it, uh, share and subscribe to the channel as well, please. I will appreciate that. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hey, guys, at any time, chime in. Just having a friendly conversation with you guys about what you guys are doing during this holiday season. Especially when it comes to your money. And really how to avoid money traps 
the the whole from October through uh, from October through Valentine's Day is a money trap for men and women. For men and women. Now, some holidays lean heavy on the women. Some holidays uh, 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 lean heavy on the man. Uh, this is the way I see it. Uh, Halloween is, is a mixed bag on both parties, right? Uh, uh, Thanksgiving, they lean heavy more on the women, right? Uh, going out buying food, cooking and all that, right? Uh, Christmas is kind of a mixed bag, and then you got Thanksgiving. I mean, excuse me. Then you have Valentine's Day. That kind of leans heavy on the on the man as well. Throughout the course of October, to I think I did a research study. I looked up a research study from October to February. The average American, listen to this. The average American spends eight thousand dollars. Did anyone hear me? From October, from October to February, they're talking about the average American spent $8,000. And I want you guys to think about that. Now, you may not be at $8,000 because, again, that's an average. So that's rich people, uh, uh, middle class, lower class, poor, right? But they saying average people are spending eight grand from October, not on their bills, not on food. We're not talking about food and gas, Ashley. We're not talking about that. Okay. All right. We're talking about on gifts. We're talking about on the holiday season. We're talking about if it's Halloween, we're talking about candy. Decoration, costumes, Thanksgiving. We're talking about decorations, food, and traveling because people do a lot of traveling. Okay, traveling. They're right after Thanksgiving. Tomorrow you have no. On um, Friday you have what? You have Black Friday. Now, every Friday for me is black. <laughs> I'm black every Friday, but black Friday. I'm going to go back in the lab. I'm going to come up with some better jokes. Kind of like Kevin Hart's uh, new stand-up special that it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. It wasn't edgy enough. It, it wasn't. It, it wasn't that good. His new, his new special on uh, Netflix, it wasn't that good. Love the brother Kevin Hart, though. Really, really funny guy, but it wasn't edgy enough. It wasn't that funny. But anyway, so we got uh, Thanksgiving where a lot of people travel, buy a lot of food, stuff like that. Okay, okay. Then you got Black Friday, then you have Cyber Monday. Then you have Christmas, booyah, a lot of people travel, decorate, a lot of decorations, a lot of decorations. And people in this neighborhood, Lord have mercy. Okay. So in this neighborhood, they just got money to burn. You now, you talking about Halloween? People had movie movie sets in their front yard, like cobwebs coming from their house. People killing people in, in front of their front yard. Like some people were calling, like the police stuff looks so real. Like that's what I'm saying. People spent eight thousand dollars. Ghosts and goblins and lit up all sorts of things. That was just on Halloween. People probably spend a grand or two on Halloween decorations. Now Christmas. People here already got lights and stuff on their house. I ain't putting no lights on my goddamn house. Let me tell you something, fellas, ladies. Hopefully you can find somebody like-minded like you who does like those are trivial things. I love that little lady downstairs. I like, babe, we ain't getting no lights. Like, I ain't getting no lights in the house. Look at all that. My buddy across the street, he like he ain't putting that stuff with his eyes. 
<laughs> lights. Some of you gonna go out and spend money on lights or get somebody to put your lights up and I can't do it. I can't spend the money on it. I can't spend money. You know where I spend my money yet? Saving, getting out of debt, investing, traveling. I spend more money traveling. Now we're thinking about getting this patio. Now this patio. Y'all go ahead and donate some money real quick because this patio is going to cost some money. Y'all go ahead and donate to the channel, okay? Now, you donate $10 or more, uh, half of it is going to that patio. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, we spend a lot of money. Then you head over to Valentine's Day. Now, believe it or not, believe it or not, people actually decorating on Valentine's Day. They be having heart and kisses and all sorts of stuff around the place. Mm. Excuse me. But they do. They do. And then guys get out there. Yep, Super Bowl Sunday. Yep. People spend a lot of money with that, too. I forgot that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Who was that? Marcel. Thank you, Marcel. I appreciate that. Mike says he loves Black Friday because the stocks go up. All right. But you got Valentine's Day. I'll get back on Super Bowl Sunday. You got Valentine's Day. And people, men, during Valentine's Day, I don't know what some I don't know what's wrong with some of you guys, man. I I, I don't. I don't know what's I I put my hand up on my hip. When she did she did, I don't know what's going on with you guys, man. I don't know what you I don't know what's going on with you guys. I'm talking to the men. Ladies, you guys are smart. You guys just sit back and wait till a guy buy you all the things you want. Not all the ladies. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying. Ah, oh, she gives me money when I'm in need. Now, I'm not saying women are gold diggers. Even though I watch a lot of those gold digger uh, videos on uh, you on uh, Facebook, they're absolutely funny. But men, you go out here and spend all your money on Valentine's Day. Get the time to know your lady to see if she even likes things like that. You know, my lady told me she don't want no diamond ring. She want a patio. And, you know, we think about that. Like, the patio is for everybody. But she's like, that's what she want. I mean, she deserved both, of course. But she like, you want a patio. Like, I'd rather be out in the patio, go out there and stretch, no matter if it's cold, get a heater out there, you know. Because the little patio we have now is a little slab, you know. And here's another thing. I thought about that. You know, building on your house brings up the property value, Right? Okay. And standing your patio, getting things built in your house is going to bring value. Some things, here's another thing. There's things that you can do to your home is going to bring comfort. Then there's other things that are going to bring value. And then some things are just going to look well. Like, you know, we spent uh, about 1500 in the laundry room. I don't know. It, 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 it's not going to bring like, it's not going to increase the property value, so to speak but it's going to make somebody want the home that much more. When they see that you've done a lot to the house, they're like, man, I don't got to do nothing. People love that. They're like, I don't have to do nothing. How much is it? I just really want you guys to think about this holiday season and all the holiday seasons you guys will be going through. It will increase the value. But here's the thing. I was talking to the neighbor because, you know, like I said, some things I caught. I'm, I can't lie to you guys. We looked at their patio. It looks awesome. I, would, I, I think I'm going to show. Should I show their pictures of their patio on mine? I don't think that's right. I don't think I should show their stuff. He let me take pictures to give me ideas. I can't show their stuff. I might show one picture, though. No. But it looks really, really nice, and we liked it. We liked it. Uh, it's an outside cooking area with a bar, uh, uh, three seating areas. It was really nice. And 
it's big, but it's not like, oh my God. It's like, oh, this is nice. But you know, they really increased the living space of their home. I talked to the guy that did it. I said, hey, you know, what should I set my budget for? You know, how much, what's the ballpark of that? He was like 35 plus. And I looked at him, I'm like, okay, I'm not, no, my budget is 30. Dollars. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. But guys, you got to find out where your value is. You have to find out where you're going to put your money at. Put your, put your money in things that's going to make you more money. Me putting my money inside my home, me putting my money, because here's the thing. I know that you guys have been following me for a while. Thank you, Percy. I appreciate that. Oh, what I'm sipping on, brother? I am sipping on some good old Costco eggnog. Fa la 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 la. I'm not tipsy at all. I'm just a fool. A lot of times I try to hone my personality down because I'll be joking the whole time. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Robin laid an egg. Yeah. Babe, don't laugh at me. I'm live. See? Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. But yeah, uh, I believe that putting your money inside your home. Like, see, here's the thing. I was in the market. I was in the market for buying a home. I was going to buy a rental property. Let me tell you guys, for you guys out there who actually bought a rental property, and I have a mentor. He's been mentoring me pretty well, pretty good guy, pretty good, really good guy, really good guy. He's one of my, he's one of my good friends now. And, you know, he told me, man, you're going to go through 10, 12 properties before you land one. And, you know, I had that money set aside. I had that money ready. And I was just like, uh. I got out there and earned his money, option money, in the contract. Find out some more things out the contract. It's going to cause me more to rehab. Inside of another house. Earn his money, option money, inside of a contract. Boom. Outside of contract. I said, you know what? Before I get totally discouraged about buying a rental property, let me back up. And let me revisit this a little bit later. So we get this patio. I'm thinking about buying a property this time next year. Yeah, I'm going to take a year off. I'm just, I'm going to come in because what I want to do is hopefully this coronavirus thing dies down. And I want to meet my buddy. He He's in Houston, right? He lived, used to live in uh, this part of, uh, used to live in uh, Flower Mound. Um, but I want to shadow him. He has a lot of properties up in Detroit, no, up in Michigan. But I want to fly up there and I want to, I want to um, um, shadow him for a couple of days of how he goes through the process because I'm out here flat-footed. I, I'm like trying to weasel and learn. And it's better when you have a mentor, when you're fundling and bumbling and tumbling around on your own, you can, you can lose a lot of money doing that. It's, if you got a mentor, use them. And I would advise if you're gonna get into property, if you're not already into property, uh, shadow them for a while. Shadow, shadow them as long as you can. Cause I, I I figured I'm glad I figured this out before I came too much out of pocket. No, I'm all, I'm already out of pocket like a G. Inside of because you'll be inside of a contract, then within that option period, if the option period expires, you don't get the option money back. You just get the earnings money back. So you should be investing your money. Read this in your home, improving your home to increase the property value. But when it comes to the holiday season, you guys invest your money in a bunch of bull crap. You do. Now, what I bought away, let me, let me guys show you this bottle. Let me take you guys over here really quickly. Show you guys some stuff real quick. Now, I just want to show you what I got in Cancun. Y'all see that bottle right there? That bottle right there is literally... The best tequila I've ever had in my life. This bottle right here called Azul. I bought it in Mexico. It's the smoothest tequila I've ever had. Let me show you some things I got to feel. I got that Duce. Not, not Rosé, but I said Duce. Uh, let's see here. And if you notice, I'm going to show you how much I'm not a drinker. Okay, don't look at that bottle. Don't look at that bottle. Okay. 
But that one I mixed with lemonade. But you know, that's still brand new bottle, brand new bottle, brand new box. That's that ball of twenty one. That's not. That's still closed. Let me see if I can rotate this. Okay, they won't let me do it. And then I have behind that I have that uh, El Padrino tequila. Okay. All right. Then you come down here. You got that good old cracking for people who like the dark rum, and you got the Amaretto behind that. The Tito's, the Kill Brand, Tarantula tequila. You can drink this by itself. It's sweet and it's smooth. Got some scotch here. You know that the Balvini was scotch as well. Um, peach knobs and all that other stuff you need. The stag, that's not too good. Triple sack. Uh, you got the silver rum. You want to mix caramel rum. That's pretty good as well. All the stuff that you need to make a drink. But look at all this stuff. It's still, still brand new. Look at the tops. Look at the tops. Still brand new. It's like decorations for me. You see the bottles, they still full, ladies and gentlemen. Get my hand out the camera. All this stuff is still pretty. That's open, margaritas, but that's still new. The Callahan's is still new. All this stuff is still new, guys. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, I be sipping a lot. I, I really don't. Every now and again, it's good to have because some people may come over and sip and you have some stuff for them. But, hey, don't be buying stuff for nobody else. That's what I'm saying. I bought it because every now and again, I like to have a drink. And once you buy it all at one time, you don't have to buy it again. That's all I'm saying. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> as I said, you say took my alcohol. I really don't. <clears throat> Ashley, let me tell you, seriously. Um, you know, some people say, oh, I have a couple of drinks a week. No, I probably have a drink or two. Two or three times a month, truthfully. Not even wine. We got wine downstairs. We bought. Oh, let me tell you about that. Uh, McBride. Go and go and support the McBride sisters. If you guys want some wine, especially like for Christmas, get some wine. Check out the McBride. The McBride sisters. There's that's a black owned business. They sell really good wine. McBride sisters. Support the black owned business. Yeah. But um. No, I don't, I don't drink that much at all. You see, all that was still brand new. It's not like I'm replacing them. Turn up, you know, nah. But I really want you guys to use your money wisely. So uh, let's see here. Uh, real estate is booming. I want to become an agent. What are your assets in and based on percentages? So let me address what Ashley said. She wants to become an agent. Now, my lady, she is finishing her real estate license. So she's about to be an agent herself. Uh... When it comes to, let's see here, he says, what are your assets in based on percentages? I'm not going to lie to you, man. <clears throat> I can't tell you right off the top of my head because I have assets on different investment platforms. You know, Robinhood, Webull, Vanguard. Uh, I still got a little bit of money over TD Ameritrade. Trade. Uh, but that's, that's mostly it. Uh, you know, I got a uh, 401k. Um, which I really don't look at, you know, and hopefully I'm never, I don't ever need to look at, I can leave that to somebody. But I don't want you guys to forget this time in your life that the dollar that you could be investing versus spending. And, and before you go out and you buy all these people you have on this list and what you're going to give them, because, you know, people like, oh, I'm going to give... Lil Dirk, Shanawa, I'm going to give Lil Turnhoop, Lil, Lil, Lil Daryl. You're going to name all these people. And you're going to give these people these gifts. I have a question for you guys. Before you go out and buy all these different people gifts, ask yourself this question. Why? Why? That's the first question. Why am I buying this person a gift? Why am I buying this person a gift? Then the second question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to you first? Is it worth it to you first? Is it worth it to them? Then three, how is it financially going to affect you? Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have. I didn't know I was on here that long. But hopefully... I've 
had someone to reevaluate how they were going to allocate and spend their hard working money this holiday season. And knowing me, I'm gonna have a couple more videos like this, especially as we get closer to Christmas, because I just want people to wake the hell up. There's a lot of people who are undeserving of your money, undeserving of your gifts, and most importantly, undeserving of your time. Oh, and you missed it, Ashley. I went to Cancun. We went to Cancun. First time. First time I went to Cancun. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a great and wonderful evening. For those who celebrated, happy Thanksgiving. Or for people like me, happy meal time with turkey. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Hope we may see each other Friday. I don't know. You know, I just pop in and pop out. You know how it is. Like the guy who massaged your feet on Adam Sandler. You want me to rub your feet? <laughs> Peace.